As I mentioned earlier, our gospel reading, which we just heard, serves as the basis of our meditation today. I'll reread another verse for us. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. Then the man said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is God's word. I love a good movie or a good show that has plot twists at the end that you never expect. Right, and I'm sure you know the ones, the plots that lead you in one direction and that at the very last minute something else happens and it throws you for a loop. Maybe you like watching crime shows and throughout the whole show it leads you to believe that this person is guilty and then at the last second it's someone else and it blows your mind. Or if you've ever seen any movie by M. Night Shyamalan, you know that feeling all too well. Almost all of his movies have those twists at the end. If you've ever seen The Sixth Sense, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to spoil it, but if you watch it, you'll understand. But sometimes when we read the scripture, we might get that same feeling. Whereas we're reading, we expect one thing to happen, and then God steps in at the last minute and something completely unexpected happens. For example, if we think back to when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt from their slavery, they make it to the Red Sea, and they're stuck. And behind them, the most powerful army in the world of the Egyptians is on their tails. If you didn't know the story, what do you think might happen? The Israelites might die, the Israelites might be brought back to Egypt as slaves once again, but then God steps in. And Moses, through the power of God, puts his staff in the air and the sea parts. Israel makes it through on dry ground. The Egyptians follow. The water collapses. The Egyptians die. That was completely an unexpected thing that God did to intervene. Or if we think to the New Testament, Jesus brings his disciples out on the lake once again, on the sea rather, and says, cast your nets down. After a night of being skunked and not getting a single fish, they must have thought Jesus was crazy. This is the worst time of day to catch fish. What might they expect? Throw their nets down, nothing comes back up, and Simon Peter doesn't believe that this is the Messiah who was to come. But the unexpected happens. They cast their nets down and they have so many fish that the nets begin to break, the boats begin to sink, and Simon Peter believes that this is the Messiah who was to come. God does unexpected things for his kingdom. What about today? A Holy Week text during the Christ the King Sunday and the end time season of the church year, that's kind of unexpected. I mean, don't we cover this every March or April, depending on when Easter falls? Shouldn't we be reading a lesson from Revelation that shows our king in all of his divine authority and splendor? You might expect that. But when we read from Luke, we see a very unexpected thing from our king. In the night before Jesus hung on the cross and all of this took place, Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples on Maundy Thursday, having one last meal with them. And as would typically happen, the disciples get together and they start arguing about who's the greatest in the kingdom, who's going to be at God's right hand in heaven. And I think to some extent we might all be like that, just a little bit in our hearts. We want to be known as a good person by our words and our actions. We want to be known as a great Christian who stands up in the faith because it feels good to be the greatest, to be picked first. That's what our sinful nature craves. And maybe we get just a taste of what that feels like to be the greatest maybe on our birthday. Because the whole day is about us. We get everything we want. We get the meal that we want. We don't have to prepare it. We get the cake that we want. Never mind what everyone else wants for a flavor. I want chocolate. We get showered with presents even though we didn't do anything to deserve them. All the while, all we do is sit on this earth as it makes one more revolution around the sun. And we celebrate the day that our mother did all the work for us, bringing us into this earth. But it feels good to have the attention on us, to be the greatest. But as the disciples were arguing, 
Jesus butts in, and he shows them what it really means to be the greatest. Jesus said, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. Jesus took every stereotype of what it means to be a leader, to be a ruler, and took that social ladder and flipped it completely upside down. The world says that the greatest is at the head of the table in the kingdom, but not in God's kingdom. The world says that the oldest person in the room who has the most seniority is the greatest, not in God's kingdom. Expect the unexpected in God's kingdom. Fast forward to the next morning and afternoon on Good Friday as Jesus hung on the cross. We can fill in his journey from the upper room to the cross. We know what happened. Jesus followed God's will perfectly. He willingly handed himself over to die. He stopped his disciples from fighting back and ruining what needed to be done for the kingdom. He was beaten and mocked without any cause. He was spit at and sneered at. He had his authority and kingship questioned by an by a earthly ruler and authority. Does that seem like a way a king would act? Not according to the world. According to the world, a king would have stood up for himself. He would have had an army at his heels ready to fight back for those who came at him. If he really was the king of the Jews, he would have brought himself off that cross because that's what the world thinks a king should do. But that's not what happens in God's kingdom. The earth says that a king should be mighty and powerful and put everyone else beneath him, but that's not what our king does. Does our savior king have all of those accolades, all of that power? Yes, but expect the unexpected from your king. And as our king hung on the cross, looking like anything but a king, he did the unexpected. He took the sin of the whole world, even the sin of the people who arrested him without cause, beat him bloody, mocked him and persecuted him and sneered and spit at him and threw insults at him as he hung there on the cross. And he took all of those sins and he put them on himself. He did what kings normally don't do. He took the place of those who were the ones that sinned because that's what God's kingdom is all about. That's what a king does in God's kingdom. And that's what our king did for you and me. He took all of our sins on the cross with him. Even sins that we commit today, he paid for over 2,000 years ago. Sins that we don't deserve to have forgiven are forgiven because that's what our king did for you and for me. Our king did the unexpected for us. He did what we, what we could not, and he lived the perfect life for us. He died for us. He rose for us because that's what a servant does. That's what God's kingdom is all about. And one of the thieves on the cross came to that realization, that truth, through faith in his last moments on earth as he watched his king hang next to him. He said, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That man lived his whole life in sin. That man was being punished for what his sins deserved. Sins so bad that he was being crucified for them. That was only reserved for the worst of criminals. And he was one of them. He got the death sentence because of his crimes. And a while before he spoke these words, Matthew tells us in his gospel that he was throwing insults at Jesus too. But without a moment to spare, the Holy Spirit broke through his calloused, sinful heart and worked saving faith 
Saving faith that saw the man hanging next to him, not as a common criminal, but as the king of the universe dying for his sins. This man understood in his last hours what God's kingdom is all about. It's about expecting the unexpected. And just like that man, the Holy Spirit does the same thing in our hearts. It breaks through the hard, calloused, sinful hearts that we have and works saving faith that tells us that our King, our Savior, did the unexpected for us. He paid for our sins for all time. He does not put to death those who sin on the spot like like an earthly king would, but instead he redeems, he forgives, and he saves. That's what kings do in God's kingdom. And even today, our king gives us the strength to fight another day, to persevere through the trials we go through because he already won the war for us on the cross. He gives us our days of grace every day to live for him. And he gives us the hope in our eternal life to come, the same hope that he gave this man on the cross. Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Where is your hope? Where are your expectations? Are they in the rulers of this earth that promise this and promise that but never come through and they never actually put their life on the line for you? Is it in the ordinary things of this life that we expect because it's easy and because it's simple, because it's safe? Let your expectations be shattered by your king the king who keeps promises always and finish the work of your salvation on the cross, guaranteed. That's what kings do in God's kingdom. And while the promise of eternal life may not come for you today as it did for this man on the cross, it will come when your king knows best for you. That you can expect with confidence from your king who did the unexpected for you. Amen. Please stand.